Okay, we've begun recording at 6.02. We're gonna call the meeting to order. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Yes. I do, I do have one. Does anybody else have one? I have one. Chuck does, go ahead, Chuck. Um, it, we could do it under uh, communications committee, but uh, I, I want to bring forward a, an appointment and so I don't know if we want to do a separate appointments section or whether we just want to do it in the committee section. Oh, we can we can do it in the committee in your in your committee section. Ray, you have your hand up, sir. I have two appointees for the finance committee for the board to make. OK, well, then let's let me scratch that and let's let's add an appointments. And let's let's do the appointments uh, before. Uh, before we do, and right after public comment. So we'll get that out of the way, get those committee appointments out of the way. Uh, my addition to the agenda is quite brief. I'm gonna do it right now. We were very successful on Monday and we were approved by the VCBB. Our $12.3 million grant request was approved by the VCBB Fantastic. on Monday. So um, well, <laughs> that was a... That was that was quite an effort. I want to thank everybody that was involved in in making that happen. Uh, they showed a lot of confidence in CV Fiber, and uh, we're 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 very pleased that the uh, the board is behind us in moving forward. Jeremy, your hand is up. Yeah, I had a quick question on that. Um, I got a question from a member of the public and realized I didn't know the answer. What is the estimated uh, cost of our build out at this point? Total build out to build the like total, all the underserved. Yeah, but we've been we we've we've been. I mean, I think I can make that public, right? Ray, nod your head. Yeah, we we're, we're hovering in the fifty million dollar range. We're not sure where it's going to land in the fifties. Hopefully, it doesn't inch up any farther than that. And so far, total grants that we've received towards construction are about. Well, so far, also... total grants received are in the in the. If you include the 12.3, we're up to $20 million worth of grants. Okay. But we wow. have yet we have yet to receive that, and we haven't been right. awarded that. We have been approved. Uh, okay, that's I the see. first step. Ne first and necessary step. Okay, public comment. Did I hear that Alan had a public comment to make? Yes, I uh, on Front Porch Forum, uh, Jerry, two days after you had your CV Fiber getting ready to launch, a woman in Worcester wrote, now that CV Fiber is getting closer to being up and running, I would like information on signing up for the service. I've been holding off as I was worried it would be only a pipe dream. I have been promised too many things in my life only to have none of them come true. I was not inclined to jump in the bandwagon for worry it would become yet another one of the many things that didn't come to pass. If someone from CV Fiber would post or repost how to sign up, I would greatly appreciate it. So I posted the next day and I said, this woman's name is Iva, Iva Brown. I said, Iva, this is the first time anybody has asked me a question like this on Front Porch Forum, and it's a terrific question. I'm so glad you asked. I'm sorry to say that we don't have any uh, signups right now, but we're working on it. We have to develop our rate plans. And Iva, I'm going to start a list. You are at the top of the list. I will personally send you an email when we have service plans available for people to look at. And I said, anybody else who'd like an email like this, let me know. Within the next 36 hours, I had 16 more people who shot oh. emails and said, "I want to know." Fantastic! So congratulations to the uh, to to the writing crew. Of the uh, front porch forums are getting read. Well, that's that's great. To ensure they're on our email list if they are not already. Really? I'm going to ask folks to go on mute if you're not speaking, please. We've we've got some background sounds and somebody's on the phone elsewhere. Okay, so I had some hands up. Siobhan, your hand was up, and then I'll go to Tom. I just wanted to say that I went to a community um, uh, gathering, cookout, potluck, I guess, kind of, uh, for Orange um, that was hosted by the local church and uh, talked to a lot of people about CV Fiber, and a lot of people that was 
primarily an older crowd. There were a few young families. There was bouncy houses, so there were a few young families. Um, some people had heard of it, but didn't know what we were doing and didn't know any details. And several people had never heard of it. And I realized I should have brought materials with me and I didn't. Um, and I was also there with Jeremy Hansen because he was taught, we, we were kind of tag teaming there, introducing each other to the people because he's, he's running for the Senate in our district. And, and also, so he was also talking up CV Fiber as one of the board members too. So there were people from a lot of different communities, not just Orange. There was a lot of South Barry or East Barry and, and people like that. And I said, well, you're in our district and, and all of that. And it, it's kind of, I don't know how to reach those people because well, it's they're still not early on front to front reach them. Forum. It's still a little early. We don't want folks thinking that they're going to get internet tomorrow because they're well, not. And, yeah, and, but and, I would like them to hear know our name at least, though. Oh, Do yes. Don't we want them to sure. know our name? Yeah. yeah. No, abs absolutely. And, and, and Front Porch Forum is helping that. And you reaching out like that is helping that. But I, I always want to caution about overpromising folks that are going oh, to yeah. be disappointed, yeah. you know, off the bat. So uh, even the woman that, re that responded to Alan, she she listened to my presentation, I guess, with a very hopeful ear because I was really trying to, to, to play it down. But uh, Tom, you have your hand up, sir. Off mute. Wonderful. Um, I just, uh, last meeting was a uh, remiss. I, I did not uh, introduce the new alternate from East Montpelier. Actually, I don't think he's on today, uh, but Marshall Cottrell is the new alternate for East Montpelier. And uh, I think he's been attending some of the communications committee uh, events, but just wanted to give him a shout out and hopefully he'll watch the video later. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, John, your hand is up. Yeah, I wanted to piggyback on Siobhan's comment. Uh, we have had some t discussion in the communications committee about reaching the people who can't be reached through normal means. Um, and uh, we are working on that. You know, for before the webinar, we uh, we put out a flyer that got at least some distribution. We did it a little bit too late to get really good distribution, but, you know, putting up flyers in libraries and community centers and, you know, any store with a bulletin board um, with the idea of reaching people who may not be on Front Porch Forum, may not have internet at all. Um, so uh, that is something we're talking about and any uh, suggestions I would say are welcome. That, that, that's a good point, John. Reaching out to folks uh, in, in multiple ways is part of our plan. Uh, and it's it's something we're going we we are definitely going to implement as we move forward. So I'd like to continue on into into, into our meeting because we uh, we do try to make uh, try try to make good use of this limited time. So we have the meeting minutes. Uh, Jeremy, do you want to run with that, please? Yes, sir. I thought I'm trying to multitask here a little bit. So uh, motion to approve the April twelfth. May 10th, uh, June 14th, 2022, uh, Governing Board meeting minutes as drafted. Second. Second. I heard Chuck. Okay. Chuck wins this time. Sorry, Siobhan. <laughs> All right. Chuck, Chuck won that too. Uh, are there any opposed to this motion? Any abstentions? All right, all that's left are yeas. We've, we, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, the minutes are approved. Uh, Ray, are you going to uh, introduce our new treasurer? Um, sure, I and Janelle, actually. Excellent, beautiful, please do. <laughs> so uh, with us tonight is Laurie, Laurie Beth Putnam. And uh, Laurie Beth is, um, uh, is a lot of experience as a treasurer for a number of different organizations, um, among which is the uh, fire, the fire community in the Washington uh, District, and uh, so, and she has grant experience. And we've had a little bit of a turnover with Phil, um, and we're still transitioning. Uh, we're still transitioning. Uh, Janelle, did you want to add some comments? Janelle. Janelle, I'm sorry. You're <laughs> absolutely right. Yeah, of course. 
Um, Lori, Beth, um, welcome to CV Fiber. We're so happy to have you here. We're so grateful for you, um, and we're looking forward to working together. Uh, Lori Beth goes by Lori Beth. So if anybody reaches out to her, it's not Lori, it's not Beth, <laughs> it's Lori Beth. Um, and yeah, she's brought, she's, she brings with her so much experience um, working in profit and nonprofit, uh, running her own consulting practice. Um, so we're, we're just really grateful that you're here. Thank you and welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I'm happy to be here. I'm finding this very interesting and I'm looking forward to it getting progressive into the community and get this up and running. Well, I hope you find us a good group to work with. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for being willing to take on this rather enormous responsibility. Uh, as 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 we were just discussing, uh, you 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 will be managing uh, millions of dollars uh, on a daily basis, and we very much appreciate your assistance. <laughs> thank thank very you welcome. very much. Uh, and Ray, is there a treasurer's report that you're going to do as the finance committee chair? Well, uh, what I would say to you is that um, you had mentioned that you wanted to take up the appointments right after public comments. So if you'd like to do that now. <clears throat> we could do that, and so I will. Uh, I will introduce my um, uh, identify the people for the two folks who are interested in the finance committee, and then Chuck can do his communications S committee. How's that? Sounds sounds like a plan. Okay, great. So um, I have uh, two uh, two individuals. Uh, Ted uh, Ted Barnett of Williamstown. Ted is the CFO of a nonprofit with uh, management and um, uh, grant management experience, and he recently moved to Williamstown. Uh, so get them when they first get here, right? And so the second one is also a newcomer, uh, David Mannix. David Mannix has grant writing experience and project management experience and recently moved to Marshfield. And so I would be moving that uh, uh, the board appoint Ted Barnett of Williamstown and David Mannix of Marshfield to the Finance Committee. And I think Chuck has a follow on. Uh, are you going to add to that motion, Chuck, or would you like a separate motion? Why don't we uh, break them up? Okay. So uh, I'm looking for a second. 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 Seconded by Siobhan. Thank you. Dang uh, it. Any any opposed? I seconded that. You seconded that, did you? <laughs> oh, he was and, slow, uh, slow. Way before. And, and anyone opposed to Ted Barnett and David Mannix being uh, added to the finance committee? Any abstentions? Hearing none, it's unanimous. Thank you. Welcome, Ted. Welcome, David. All right, uh, I'll proceed then. Um, I am yeah. happy to announce that uh, the same Marshall Cottrell that uh, Tom Fisher uh, introduced as our new alternate in East Montpelier uh, has joined uh, the, well, has expressed interest in joining the Communications Committee, has uh, come to a few different sessions uh, and, and you know, would like to join us on our adventure. Now, Marshall has a background in doing strategy and operations, uh, technical strategy and operations for a very large company called GitLab. Uh, they run one of the biggest developer operations firms in the world. They're a fully remote company. Uh, and just like with Ray's candidates, uh, is a recent, uh, you know, a recent addition to our Vermont community. Um, but he's already shown a, a knack for the kinds of conversations we have in the communications committee, uh, and would be a great addition to the team. I was hoping he'd be here to introduce himself a little bit more, but um, it seems he was not able to make it tonight. Uh, so I go ahead and and move that we appoint Marshall Cottrell to the to the communications committee. Second. 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 All right. How about if I give that one to Jeremy? I think I heard five voices <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Harmony. Uh, okay. Seconded by Jeremy. Uh, any any opposed to this motion? Any abstentions? Hearing none, then it's unanimous. The motion passes. Thank you, Chuck. And thank you, Marshall, for being part of a, hopefully, a, quite a successful team moving on. And uh, Ray, I guess then we uh, move back to the treasurer's report, if I may. So I have a uh, finance report um, to give to you. I sent out earlier today the um, a statement of net position and also a statement of revenues and expenses. And the statement of uh, net position gives a year over year <coughs> uh, comparison. And you can see that for the year uh, 2021, 
Uh, at this point in time, we have $69,500 in the bank. Ray, and can you possibly make that larger? It oh, is sure. micro font as a window within a window within a window. Okay, let me get this back here. I think that's the wrong one. Here we are here. Is it really that small, huh? Yep. That's pretty there you tiny, go. Thank right? you. There we go. Um, you can there also we... hold down the control key and use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Who has and a everyone mouse? Everyone can do don't, that. Don't, don't, don't confuse Ray, please. And who has a mouse? No, no, no. I mean, I, I'm not mouse? talking about Ray. I'm talking about everyone <laughs> else. Who's not yeah, Ray. everyone else can. Would somebody okay. mute, somebody mute oh. Matt? Okay, so um, <clears throat> you may. Re so what I'm looking at here is uh, twenty uh, twenty one sixty nine thousand dollars, and here we are in uh, in twenty twenty two at four point five million dollars. So that's uh, that's a big difference. But as you heard, we just got our twelve point three million dollar um, uh, uh, grant award. This particular this particular report, the statement of revenues and expenses is now way too big to cover the whole screen. So the, the point here for this particular report is this. Um, <clears throat> the statement of revenues and expenses January to June um, reflects basically the income by grants. You can see the grants across the top, but the most important two are here, the pre-con two and the pre-con two materials. And here what you see is that uh, the pre-con two general was like 2.8 million and pre-con two materials shows kind of a first tranche of $2.2 million uh, that we've received. And um, it, virtually nothing has been expended uh, because Janiel's gonna talk a little bit later about um, the orders that we've made in which we're gonna spend all of this and much more uh, very soon now. So this is an interesting report. Uh, please take a look at it um, in your um, in your email. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to address them. I can tell you this, that the next time we do this, it'll be Lori Beth and it won't be me. <laughs> <laughs> so <there's> some relief. <laughs> any questions, comments? I just want to say, is this uh, the handiwork of uh, Phil? Um, which part, the reports? Yeah. No, and actually, the reports come from Bonnie. Okay. And um, uh, yeah, so the reports come from Bonnie, and we'll be going to the executive committee real soon with regard to what reports we should have publicly on our website. So that's a that's another topic for another time. A nice job. All right. Thank you, uh, Janiel. Would you like to? Uh, if there's no more discussion on the treasurer's report, uh, Janiel, would, would you like to uh, move forward with the executive's director report? Absolutely. Um, so a few things to report. Um, Jerry mentioned the big one. We got the, the grant money, and we're also looking into other um, funding resources through VCBB, uh, statewide funding resources for potentially more grant funding. Um, and then uh, RFPs, we have a couple live RFPs. One of them is the construction RFP. We've received three bids from construction firms and we're looking to award those bids soon. We're uh, using NRTC to help us make some decisions. We're setting up calls with those bidders next week so that we can gather more information from them, clarify a few things, and then decide on which scopes to offer which firms or whether to go with all of them or one of them um, or some combination of scopes. The other our RFP that we have in the public right now is our public engagement and marketing RFP, which was well received. We received three intents to bid today. Um, we know that at least three folks will be bidding on our public engagement and marketing RFP. And uh, this will be a scope for initial public engagement to reach some folks that haven't been reached before, previously invisible, as well as other members of the communities that we're that are part of our communities. And uh, it will include ongoing marketing as well. So uh, we have bids due on that by August 1st. Um, then we have Make Ready. The 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 uh, Make Ready is happening. We're going to we're going on ride outs with WEC. We're doing our fifth ride out with WEC tomorrow. Oh, we've done four um, that have outlined specific things that need to be done in the poles or the pole spans, such as tree trimming and 
um, make ready work in both the electric and communication space so that we can get the poles and the route ready to build. And this is an important part of construction. It is part of construction. Um, and then materials procure procurement is a big one as well. Uh, we put in orders for the first 400 miles. Now that we have received, reviewed, and started working with our materials and warehousing um, folks, we are actively seeking out additional, we're seeking out warehousing space. We have some space where our fiber is currently being stored at WEC, and we're in conversations with folks about warehouses. I'm uh, looking at warehouses this week as well. And we have ordered materials from three different firms that include the first five cabinets of our materials and uh, as well as all the, the hardware needed for the first 400 miles, electronics uh, and other materials that are required to build out the first third of our network. So those were huge purchases that were made and uh, those materials will be arriving over the course of several months <laughs> because several of them had very long lead times up to 40 weeks. So that's where we are. We've made a lot of we've made a lot of progress. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'd like to add one thing to the uh, materials procurement, Janiel, and and that is uh, following up on what Janiel had just mentioned about the long lead times. We we uh, we we are working with our providers, our materials providers, and our warehousing folks, inventory management folks so that we have enough materials to start so we're not going to get the 400 we're not waiting to accumulate 400 miles of materials before we start and that's why we had the early order for the cabinets that we need and the early order for the electronics that go with those cabinets so that we can start building as soon as the materials are here for those small areas where we're starting right because we can only do so many so many miles uh, so many miles at a time. So that's uh, that's part of the plan is to be able to build as soon as we possibly can and to get folks lit um, as soon as possible. And I see a hand up from RD. RD, you must be on mute, sir. RD, you're still on mute. Okay, so let's move on to the communication. I, I just wanted to know for the. There you Jerry. go. Go ahead, please. I, I'm sorry, I'm having difficulty here. Jerry, I want to note for the record, I have been on the meeting since six oh five, on my t on my phone, but I haven't been recognized, so I'm oh. going to mute now. Okay, uh, thanks, RD. Glad you're here. Yeah, thank you. I since six oh five. Very good. Thank you. Chuck, yeah, moving on to communications. Sorry, sorry, Jeremy, did you have something to add before we do? Oh, I, I was just letting RD know that I, I did get him in the attendance. I, I recognized his uh, number ending in 75. <laughs> great. Uh, great. Well, it's been a, a busy time in the communications committee. Uh, you know, over the course of the last couple of months, we've transitioned to producing two front porch forum posts a month rather than just the one. Uh, and it has, I, in my humble opinion, been a, a wild success. We are seeing a ton more engagement on our website as a result. Uh, I did end up sharing a set of metrics back with the communications and executive committees on said website usage and and, and uh, how much of that was driven by Front Porch Forum posts. We get a great deal of engagement on, on these posts and, and so well worth the investment we put into subscribing to Front Porch Forum. So thank you for all of you that, that, that make that possible and make that happen. The other big ongoing is, you know, uh, as mentioned, uh, we are put, we've put forth an RFP uh, for a public engagement and marketing services partner. 
Now, I want to call attention to the fact the first words in this RFP are actually public engagement and not marketing. Marketing will be an important element of this, but we recognize that public engagement is the even more important element of this because we need to uh, figure out as an organization how we uh, embrace our communities and communicate them with regular, uh, with regularity and with conciseness. Uh, and we need to be figuring out how to reach audiences that aren't traditionally online. So it's it's really uh, going to involve a different shape than a traditional marketing services where marketing services have often moved um, to online marketing almost exclusively these days. Um, and and so you know we're we're going to want somebody who can help us get into uh, you know town halls and and town offices and handing out flyers and senior centers and and uh, things of this nature and and so you know we're very very keen to have a partner who understands this very uh, uh, unique need that we have uh, so that we can truly engage with our communities and and ensure that we're reaching the audience of people who really need our service uh, and and don't have options out there today. Um, because the assumption, of course, that uh, we can reach all of the people who are likely to subscribe to us online is 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 probably flat out wrong because so many people don't don't have those options today. Um, and so uh, a lot of work uh, on on doing that. I think, if I recall correctly, the uh, the deadline for bid uh, uh, interest to bid and questions is Friday. Is that right, Janiel? Oh, it's actually today. Uh, you're on mute, though. Uh, if you want to add more. Yes, and answers are due on Thursday. So that's, that's right. what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend some time working on answers. So we actually did receive some questions. So we did. Yeah. Yeah. So um, great, great news on that front. We've received uh, both questions and intent to bid. Uh, by my count, we had uh, 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 at least four, maybe six even uh, notices to bid. Um, and so I, I don't know if maybe there's some people doubling up on that that are actually representing the same firm. That that could could be the case. Uh, in any case, uh, great great news on the communications front. Uh, always open to new feedback if you have it on what we're doing and how we're doing it. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you do. Oh, uh, I did. Yes, I wanted to add uh, two more two more things. Um, we are also moving forward with contracting with two firms that will help augment our capabilities in this space. The first is called CrowdFiber. CrowdFiber is a software solution provider, um, very similar to Coos Systems, if you happen to remember what they were, only a lot better. What they do is referred to as demand aggregation. They plug into our website, uh, allow customers to search their address and will map their address to the regions we've defined for build out to allow customers to understand when we're likely to, to enter their market and go all the way down the path when we enable it to, uh, to perch, picking their package and purchasing and, and signing a contract if we want to do contracts. Uh, it has a great deal of sophistication and capability around helping us tailor the, the package offering. Now, the actual billing would then go downstream to Waitsfield Champlain Telecom to uh, to service for us, um, but it gets us all the way through that, that checkout capability. Um, so it's a, it's a very nice software package, and it's pretty inexpensive for what we get. So we're moving forward with that. Um, and then the other thing, we, uh, uh, although I have a, a motion on that that I'll get to in a moment, the other thing that we are moving forward with is a service called Cornerstone. Cornerstone produces telco materials, or, or I should say marketing materials for telcos. Those marketing materials uh, are designed to be for broadband companies that largely are rural broadband companies. And those rural broadband companies um, uh, are able to adopt them because they typically don't have overlapping regions. So you can leverage the same creative collateral in multiple different markets without the same people seeing multiple companies leveraging those materials. So they produce multiple sets of materials every month. Uh, and but with a very inexpensive, about $300 a month subscription fee, you get access to both all of the existing materials they're producing, as well as their full back library of historic materials they have produced. Um, so it's a, it's a wonderful resource. It will really help us offset and reduce 
the amount of spend that we have uh, on on developing our own from scratch creative assets, which we'll still have to do some amount of, uh, but this will help defray that cost because I can tell you right off the bat that having a professionally produced uh, piece of marketing collateral uh, produced for you from scratch costs well above $300 just for one piece. And we're gonna get access to, to multiple pieces. They do website ads, social media posts, uh, as well as um, uh, uh, email, email blasts, brochures, all sorts of things, you name it, they produce it. How can you, had you mentioned that you had something else that you were gonna bring up later? Yes. Um, so Later today? We have a motion we need to go through. Is, is that just, something you're, you're going to do now? It, it, it is. Just a moment. I've lost Second. track of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me give me just a moment. I've I've lost track of it on my screen, and I just okay. need to find while, it. While while you're finding that, I'm going to check with uh, RD. RD, you have your hand up. Is that a new hand raise or residual from before? I'm going to assume it's residual because you're still on mute and I don't hear you on 75 phone number either. Okay, go ahead, Chuck. Okay. Um, just need a moment more. I am so sorry for the wait. It'll be about 20 more seconds. For some reason, my my text when I pasted it into the chat got all got all mangled. So I'm gonna gonna give this a try here. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in here. Oh, actually, it's still mangled. Give me a second more. I'm not quite as polished as uh, Ray has gotten at this, so my apologies. <laughs> All right. Well, it came through huge, but it's at least legible now. So I'm going to I'm going to run with it. Um, so the motion that we have ahead of us is whereas CV Fiber will need to aggregate potential customers, understand addresses of interest, create and offer pre-subscription and or subscription bundles and conduct regular email campaigns to engage those potential customers uh, in parentheses. That's all things this this company does. And uh, whereas CV uh, whereas Crowdfiber is an NRTC affiliate that provides such services and the services have been deemed to be a better fit to our needs than previous uh, our previous vendor, Coup Systems, and whereas the Communications Committee recommends CV Fiber adopts and integrates Crowdfiber with our website, and whereas the Executive Committee recommends the same, it is moved... Oh, I carried for an older one. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it and I'll correct it in chat after. It is moved that the CV Fiber Board approve a budget item of no more than fifteen hundred dollars per annum to adopt and integrate the Crowd Fiber advanced tier of service, uh, and also set aside funds for seamless integration purposes. You said fifteen hundred rather than fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Thank you. Sixteen. Do I hear seventeen? Okay, <laughs> second. I'm seconding. I'm seconding. Smart. Okay, we have a, we have a second for the motion that's on the floor. RD, do you have a, a comment here, sir? No. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on this issue? So it's been through the communications committee. It's been through the executive committee, which is now being brought to our attention that it's recommended to the gov for the governing board to approve. Already I, did post up, I, I, I did put the updated text uh, in the chat there. Uh, it is moved that the CV Fiber Board approve a budget item of no more than 15000 per annum to adopt and integrate the Crowd Fiber advanced tier of service and also set aside funds for seamless integration purposes. Very good, Chuck. Thank you. And, and the, these chats also get sent to uh, the folks that pull the minutes together for us as, as well. Uh, okay, no more discussion. Any opposed to this motion? Any abstentions? 
Hearing none, it's unanimous. The vote, the, the motion passes. Thank you very much, Chuck, and the comms committee for the good work. This is this is really important stuff. These uh, these crowd fiber folks are all stars at doing what we're asking them to do. So it's going to be really helpful to have these pros working with us on making this happen. So thank you much. Uh, is there anything else, yeah, Chuck, and, from and the comms I, committee? I, I do just want to. I do just want to clarify um, for the rest of the board for transparency purposes, uh, we are proceeding with a contract with Cornerstone, but the uh, the, the expense level for Cornerstone, they're the, the people who do the marketing collateral, the expense level for them uh, does not surpass our procurement policy need to come to the full board. Uh, our procurement policy allows us to approve that at the executive committee level uh, because it is a smaller expense. Uh, and so that is why you are not seeing a corresponding note, uh, motion for Cornerstone here at the board today. Thanks, Chuck. Excellent clarification. Thank you. We have a town ARPA update. And Janiel, is that you or is that going to be our finance committee that's going to move forward with that? Um, I'm happy to give an update on that. Um, so we are we have a deadline of of September 15th for uh, matching funds from VCDD, um, and we're in discussions with uh, with Waterbury to finalize their agreement. And we've received our first um, actual physical payment from Orange, and we're in the process of receiving monies and finalizing and talking about agreements with towns. Um, and we have a couple months uh, before we have this this uh, this expiration. So uh, we are starting to reach out to the towns again, you know, to do a, 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 a re reach out to see if there is any further interest or more interest that might have been overlooked um, in the couple months in advance before the expiration for the matching funds. Now, the expiration of matching funds does not mean it's a deadline for towns to um, to commit funds. Uh, it just means that their their dollars aren't doubled by VCBB unless VCBB were to, for instance, extend that deadline. So that's where we are. We're, we're actively seeking funds. We've actively received funds and are continuing to, to work through those motions. Yeah, I was going to double check that you got the check from our treasurer. She was. She wanted it offered us. She wanted. I want it out of the account. I want it gone. <laughs> yes, we have. We, we like that. We we have it now because it's a physical check. Now we have to get to the bank. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> but it's a it's a happy problem to have, right? Our DIC. Oh, go ahead, Janiel, please. I was going to say. Um, also, um, I'm in conversations with VCDP about how to how to actually get the matching funds, right? So this is a process that, that we're working through um, to make sure that uh, the money has to be earmarked a certain way and it has to be processed a certain way to comply. So we're just going through all those motions and figuring it out. RD, I see your hand is up, sir. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, Janiel, have you uh, have you been in touch with Cabot at all? Is there going to be an MO? Um, Cabot uh, may have may have been one of the towns that uh, yeah. So I'm uh, trying to I'm sorry, I didn't. I, I, if yeah, I feel like yeah. I didn't get closure Cabot, on that. Cabot was a yes. Cabot was a yes. But did they have, get you, an have you been in touch with Cabot? Yes. Good. Okay. So let me know. I I would like to know what your interactions with the town have been. Well, yes, they they have a commitment letter. They've already yeah. committed. Yeah. But not. But we don't have an MOU with them yet. We don't. No. That would be the next step, correct, Janiel? Well, it could either it could be an MOU or it could go straight to agreement. So it it, it could be either one. OK, well, I, th I think I think we need to uh, figure out the way to make that decision and move that forward so that we can uh, get Cabot's money in the bank as well, since they're offering. 
All right, Chuck, I see your hand is raised, sir. Now, yeah, just echo the same for more town. You know, we, we need to make sure we're proactively managing that and moving it forward, please. Yes, sir. And on this on the same uh, same discussion here, our next item is approval of the Worcester ARPA MOU. Uh, oh, wait, wait, Tom has Tom has a question before we move on. Tom, you're on mute, sir. We, we haven't heard a word yet. Sorry. Thank you. Um, as this topic came up, I, I went and checked the select board meeting. There was a minute last or a meeting last night uh, in East Montpelier, and uh, the minutes reflect some confusion still around since they took the standard allocation, how can they use funds? And it sounds like a discussion might be warranted to kind of help move them along since they have committed at least uh, through a single motion a while ago that they were interested in providing us with some funds. So to move that forward thanks yeah do you, tom do you have a do you have a single point of contact for that because if you if you offline give me that information i can directly be in touch with them i can get that for you it changed but uh, i have the new one so i'll get that to you. that's great yeah. thanks excellent thank you thank you tom david go ahead yeah the new generic mou references the standard service now so it, it avoids the issue of the town having we having to report to the town if they've chosen that option. And I think almost all towns did choose that option. I think they uh, all did. So it makes it makes it a lot simpler for them and us. And the MOU now reflects that. And the the generic MOU now reflects that. Right. Well let, let's move to the Worcester MOU. Uh and and who's taking that conversation? Janiel, is that you again with this? Oh it's Alan. Go ahead, Alan, please. You're you're muted. Muted. Alan, you're muted. I wanted to blame my internet connection. I'm sorry. Uh, I put a motion into the chat. If people want to take a look, I'll move that uh, the CV Fiber Governing Board approve the CV Fiber Town of Worcester Investment in Worcester Broadband Agreement, the official title of the MOU that we have. Um, so if the second, okay. So I sent this around to folks um, and just tried to explain briefly the process that we've gone through and. It's been a long and arduous one, but finally the select board on June the 6th of this year signed on. They're giving um, $53,000, which gets matched. So it comes out to $106,000. And all we have to do to get this into the bank is for the board to agree to the agreement that it proposed, uh, which should be pretty easy to do. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to talk about what the process would was like some of the crazy questions I got asked by the board and things like that. So to, two things, Alan, I'm, I'm not seeing it show up in the chat. Uh, I don't know if anybody else is, but I, I'm not. And Ray, you have your hands up, sir, your hand up. Yeah, I have a friendly amendment to that. I don't know whether Alan wants to try, try again in the chat room. I've got a second paragraph or a second sentence. I can't, I'm... I don't know why I typed it in and I. And the second uh, second part of that, in addition to the governing board approving the blah, blah, blah. And frankly, let me put the first paragraph in there because um, it's let me put the whole thing in. Maybe it maybe this just substitute the whole thing. Can I just save mine again, Ray, so people are clear what I've said? I, I'm, I'm surprised it's not showing up in chat. I don't understand are, why. Are you sending it to everyone, Alan? Sometimes messages only go to, it, it, it'll tell you who you're sending it to. It says I'm sending it to everybody, so I don't know what's up. Huh. Um, I mean, it's a very simple motion. It's just that yeah. the governing board approved the, the agreement, uh, the Worcester Broadband oh. Agreement. The title of that's at the top of the page of the document I sent around to everybody uh, mm -hmm. over the weekend. So um, I would modify that as a friendly amendment and add the language as it may be refined by the executive committee. The language it, be refined by the executive committee? It, it may still require some work. I don't know the answer to that. It hasn't been looked at. What is it? What's what's what does it mean, Ray? What's the antecedent for it? 
Is the, it the document that we're looking at now? Yeah, the document. Okay, so look, I'm really tired of how long and how much work I put into this to this effort. And CV I'll Fiber withdraw has, it, Alan, I'll withdraw right? it. I'll, CV I'll Fiber withdraw has it. put forward I'll, a proposal. I'll withdraw the it. The town has agreed to it. I'll withdraw it. If we want to put any I'll other... Good, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, but I had a second sentence. The governing board I, I, authorizes, and listen up, the governing board authorizes the executive committee to approve such town opera MOUs as may be negotiated and acceptable to the executive committee. And the reason is that we have two more uh, governing board meetings between now and 15 September. And we're going to have a handful, five, 10 more of these possible things that we, the executive committee could dispose of between now and then, as opposed to waiting for a governing board meeting. And so I would just ask as a friendly amendment to add that second sentence. Okay, I'm gonna reject the friendly amendment. I think we, I wanna keep it straight for approval of the Worcester document. And then maybe you can move for a second, for a separate, separate motion to do what you wanna do. I just want a clean approval of this document and get the hundred three hundred and six thousand dollars in the bank for us. Yeah, we can do that. We can do this in two motions. We can we can we can take Ray's friendly amendment for part two or sentence two and make that a separate motion uh, as soon as we uh, finish with with uh, with Alan's motion. Is that yes, Ray, is that acceptable to you? Oh, sure. Yes. OK, yes. Let's do that. Alan, I'll, I'll second Alan's motion. Okay, yeah, yeah. Alan's motion is second. Uh, any... I already seconded it. Ah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Do we do we All have right. a second for that motion? Okay. Any additional discussion on this motion? <clears throat> uh, David. Is my understanding is the board has to approve these things, not the executive committee, and um, and I agree with Alan. Once a town has signed an MOU. We do not want to go back to the town a second time. Okay, so that's so we're moving forward then with this uh, Worcester MOU, and I think we're ready for a vote. Okay, are there any opposed to this motion? Any abstentions from this motion? Hearing none on both, it's unanimous. The motion passes. Thank and you. Thank you, Alan. This has been a yeah, long time. Yeah. A long time coming. Now, I, I'd like to I'd like to uh, slide over into into the issue that Ray was 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 bringing up because it's it's a, it's an important issue and we need to get this figured out, um, and we need to make sure that we're following the appropriate processes here. We have potentially, as Ray said, another five, maybe ten more MOUs to approve. We only have two more governing board meetings, and. We are not going to be able to call an emergency governing board meeting or an additional governing board meeting because it's really difficult to get a quorum. So the intention of, of the, the motion that Ray is going to put forward is that if we move this approval to the executive committee, if the, bo if the governing board moves approval of MOUs to the executive committee, we can be far more flexible with being able to get a quorum so that we can we can get this additional money that is coming towards us. Folks want to give it to us, but now with the September 15 deadline for the for the matching of the grants, uh, the calendar is against us, and the number of meetings that we're going to have uh, is against us. So that's the rationale be behind uh, Ray's motion, which he's going to make again in a minute. But Chuck, why don't you? Uh, uh, enter the discussion, please. I see your hand is up. As I see it, though, right now, the authority to approve such things does rest at the board. The board can choose to delegate any such authority as it sees fit to uh, another body if it, if it wishes to do so. Um, and I uh, agree with, or I would echo Jerry's sentiment. Uh, I do say this, of course, as a member of the executive committee, so one of the people who would, you know, have to go into that quorum and, and make that vote. But uh, I would hope that the, the board would uh, give a certain level of trust to, to try to make sure that we can uh, fast track these things and, and get, a, you know, get a hold of that money and, and move things forward. Um, but one person's opinion. Uh, RD, is your hand up, sir? 
If yes, it is. If Ray is moving it, I will second it. Okay, well, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Alan, go ahead, sir. <laughs> you just want to be careful if there are any MOU agreements out there that already have language and the town has approved it, that uh, the language, if it's like the language in the Worcester one, included approval by the board. It was yeah. specific that it had to be adopted by the board. So if you have any documents out there, uh, you won't be able to apply it to them. This change. Okay, uh, I, I have I, I see here in the chat, and I think that's a good idea. Ray, can you can you restate your motion, please, to make sure we're all talking about the same thing? Move that the governing board authorize the executive committee to approve such town opera MOUs as may be negotiated and acceptable to the executive committee. Second. Is there additional discussion on this? And Tom, thank you for pointing that out. I really appreciate it. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. You're muted. There we go. Uh, I was just going to point out that, uh, you know, as a town ARPA, this is this is somewhat limited. It's not like all MOUs or something or, or all agreements. Um, this is a fairly limited um, addition of, of uh, permissions to the executive committee. So I'm in favor of it. Thank you for that. Okay, let's uh, let's take a vote then if we don't have any additional discussion. So are there any opposed to this motion? Any abstentions from this motion? Hearing none, it sounds to me that this motion passes unanimously. Thank you. This is this is really going to help move this along. I know it's it's it, it and if if it takes as long as it has, where the deadline's going to pass us. But if in in it, when it doesn't and we get tighter on this and it moves more quickly, the uh, the the ability to get the executive committee to approve these is is going to be well founded. So thank you everybody for making this happen. I appreciate it. Uh, our next item on the agenda. Or amend, amendments to the 22 budget. So this is our existing uh, fiscal year budget, uh, which has been amended uh, a number of times. And we've been working around some of these amendments. And, and I'm, I'm going to go to Ray from the uh, Finance Committee to bring this uh, up with his screen and we can talk through the details. Uh, thank you. And so I passed this out earlier today. And um, we have, as as Jerry just mentioned, the board has made two changes uh, to the budget uh, previously. And now we're asking the, the budget, the finance committee and the executive committee uh, recommended the following changes. So the first one is uh, change three, change three to the administration um, budget line item. And you can see the changes that are here. We're adding $30,000 to the insurance um, uh, line. And the reason for that is that we've discovered that uh, in order to ensure the uh, materials that we're buying and the materials that will be hanging, uh, that it costs money. And to offset that, uh, we're taking $12,000 out of the audit uh, funding uh, because there is no audit that takes place in, in 2022. It'll certainly take place in 2023, but there's no audit in 2022. And also $18,000 from the executive director budget, um, the executive director having started in um, in April and not uh, so the first three three months uh, were were not uh, expended. The second part of this has to do with the first change to the pre-construction and construction uh, categories, and the construction category, the pre-construction categories. We've added $90,000 into poll services. This actually aligns with the administrative budget that was approved by the, um, by the uh, Vermont Community Broadband Board, um, and it's for poll applications and, and, and services associated with polls. And the, the other part is the addition of this line item, material warehouse supply chain and security of so $5 million. And, uh, uh, that is offset by changes in the construction budget. The construction budget of um, uh, fiber construction being reduced by 4090000 and the equipment spare parts budget being reduced by a $1 million uh, for that's the change one. And so the, the motion, uh, let me find the, let me find the, uh, 
your the website again. I find the uh, my, I can't even see my uh, is it up here? Oh, there you are down there in the bottom right hand corner. So let me get rid of my share and type in the motion. So move that the board uh, approve administrative change three and change one to the pre-construction and construction budget categories as reflected on the 2022 budget changes, July 22, 2022 document. Second. All right, the seconded by Chunk, is that my correct? Yep. So what I, I just wanna point out, and maybe it's pointing out the obvious here, but the, these changes to the budget are what I would con consider internal reallocating of funds that we haven't changed the total budget we've just moved money around from where we didn't realize we needed to expend funds or we didn't have the appropriate amounts and and using funds that we know we're not going to spend or haven't spent to fill those gaps so these are all internal changes and in the out the underlying bottom line to our budget uh doesn't change is there additional discussion on this Okay, excellent. So are there any opposed to this motion? Any abstentions? Hearing none to both, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Ray, for, for keeping that straight and the folks on the Finance Committee for following through on all of this. Um, I see here that our, our uh, last identified item as the construction contractors award um with a, no, a note here that uh we may well be going into executive session uh is there any discussion about this that we can have prior to going into executive session is is everything that we're going to say uh required to be said in executive session or can we do some of this that's open to the public ray please yeah, so I think we can talk about a few things. And one is that, uh, and my whereas as to this will we'll, uh, fill that in, but uh, we issued an RFP back on 31 May uh, for construction contractors. We were looking for more than one construction contractor, if we could, uh, to develop the community, uh, community network. We have received proposals from three different contractors uh, we are looking to negotiate uh, with those uh, contractors, and so we can have a discussion about all of that in executive session. And I have a I have motions to uh, get us there, talking about construction contractor proposals and negotiations. Uh, and any any discussion that folks might like to have outside of executive session on on this issue at the moment. All right, go ahead, Ray. Why don't you proceed, please? Yeah, so the executive session, there's two, there's two steps to this. The first one is a finding that it, we're actually it, premature, uh, premature public knowledge would put us at a competitive disadvantage. So <clears throat> let's see, move the pursuant to 1 VSA section 313 alpha 1 alpha. We find that premature public knowledge of our discussions relating to construction contractor proposals and negotiations will put CV fiber at competitive disadvantage. Second. I got a second from Siobhan. Uh, do we need discussion on this item? Are any opposed? Any abstentions? Unanimously approved. Continue, please, Ray. The next one gets us into executive session. Move that we enter executive session to discuss the construction contractor proposals and negotiations pursuant to one VSA section 313 alpha three, and that um, people be invited into the session in accordance with 1 VSA uh, Section 313B. And I'm not sure who else is on this list that we should perhaps include in the back room. But I know that uh, we're going to executive session so that uh, Christian, um, I guess that's a goodbye to our, our minute taker, right? And um, who else? Sorry, Beth. We have John Walters. We have Lori Beth as our treasurer. Janelle. Do we need to identify Janelle or is she always with us here? She's always with us. So <laughs> that it includes staff. So um, I, I guess who's leaving would be Orca Media. Um, we should include our, our uh, 
our treasurer as well as the um, as well as our communications uh, 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 person, John Walters, vice chair, uh, vice and chair. Uh, and vice chair, and um, and also Jeremy Hansen, who has um, additional information that would be useful to us. Is there anybody else? Jeremy Hansen, you mean Jeremy Matt? No. Jeremy Hansen no. is on this call. He is. Isn't he the alternate from Berlin? Or is that oh, I do see him. Oh, I do yep, see I'm, him. Okay, great. Hey, Jeremy, didn't realize hey. you were here. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Second. <laughs> All right. Do we need additional discussion on this motion? I don't. I don't see anybody asking for additional discussion. Any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Ray, can you post that second one for Christian? For the meeting chat, though. Actually, I think I did. They're both. They're both. Didn't there. come through. For, yeah. Didn't come through. Yeah. Didn't come through. For oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, hey, about that. you got to hit send. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I was distracted. Okay. Now, any opposed? Any abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passes. We're going to move into executive session. I'm going to stop recording at 7.02. And Christian, I will finish the, uh, I'll, I'll take the rest of the minutes and then send those to you. The recording is stopped. We're now in uh, executive session.